everybody, how are we all? Paul79 here, I hope you're safe and well. Welcome to part one of my GTE RS replica build, uh, where I am attempting, and I highlight the word attempting, to convert a petrol car into a fully electric vehicle. Now, for those of you who know me, hello you lovely lot and welcome back. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, because there could be a few uh, new people to the channel here, let me give you a sort of a brief introduction. So, I'm Paul79, I'm a petrol head, uh, or electric head now, um, from the UK, um, who loves building uh, kit cars. Uh, I'm six foot three, slightly overweight, have a beautiful wife and two beautiful teenage daughters, good sense of humour, uh, light windy walks, um, oh... Going off, the, uh, going off on a tangent there, sorry. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I love building kit cars, right? I've been doing it about 10 years and I've completed three. One is just done and it's ready to go and be painted and I'm about to start a fifth one. So if I just give you a brief history, so the first kit car I did was, you know, the classic Ferrari replica. That was a Ferrari F430 replica on a Toyota MR2. Did that about 10 years ago with my dad, fitted a three litre V6 to it, and I loved it. And I kept it for about seven, seven or eight years. And it's now sold and it lives uh, in Wales. Um, my second car um, was a GT3, Porsche GT3 911. A replica that was built on a 986 Boxster, um, painted grey, loved it, uh, so built that to use as a daily driver, had that for a good couple of years. Uh, Project 3 was another GT3, this time the GT3 RS replica, the white one that's all over my channel, that's built on a 987 uh, Boxster 2.7 and I use that as my daily driver, been driving it for over three years now, it's done about 20,000 miles, got its MOT on Friday. Uh, Project 4, another GT3 RS replica, so I wanted to go one step further, so this is the one that's just gone to the paint shop, um, that's on a 3.4S uh, Porsche 987 Boxster. Um, full, fully kitted out with big brakes, suspension, etc, etc. Custom interior, that roll cage there is going in it. That's going to be Riviera Blue um, with yellow details. So that's done. And then I've got project number five, which is this bad boy here, right? So it is another Porsche Boxster. This time it's uh, it's a 2.7. It's done 100 over 106,000 UK miles on it, and um, because I'm always trying to do something new and I love new challenges, instead of just finishing this and probably selling it, I'm actually going to try and make it electric. So why am I doing uh, this electric conversion to this car in particular? Well, I've owned this car for about a year now. Um, the previous owner had sort of started building just a normal GT3 RS replica. He had the kit fitted and the kit has actually been prepped and primed, but then he had to stop. Um, it didn't have any work on it, done on it for about a year. So really that's two years in total that it's had nothing sort of done to it. So I sort of, you know, took it off his hands. It was in a bit of a poor state when I, uh, when I first got it and I had to uh, sort of spend a good 20, 30 hours getting it so it could roll and getting it up to a certain standard so I could then just go and store it because I was still building and still am building project number four. Um, the kit has been fully fitted, it's been fully prepped, but none of the any of the other work has been done. So like the wiring, the interior. Um, so that alone is a big job. Um, but the problem is, is I put too much love into these projects. Um, and, you know, initially I thought I'll just finish it, uh, you know, because it's been so well done, the kit. I'd finish it and, and just sell it. But I'm going to, uh, I would be putting in a lot of hours that I probably wouldn't get back. <laughs> That's why I will never probably do these cars as an actual business. Um, the issue is, for me anyway, it's uh, the donor car underneath is a high mileage 2.7 litre. It's not the sort of car that I would personally choose 
to build one of these on, but that's just me. Um, I think the previous owner had plans to turbocharge it as well. Um, but being a petrol head, I was initially against EVs, um, but then about a year ago, I had for the weekend a Porsche Taycan, and that was the first electric car I'd ever driven. And oh my God, you know, I was converted. It was like, the power is immense. And, you know, the fact that it's quiet. I mean, I know these Porsche GT3s are all about noise as well as performance, um, but don't worry, I'm planning to make it make noise as well. Um, so the purpose of this series is to show you um, how I'm getting on and hopefully guide you, um, you know, if you'd like to sort of maybe convert a petrol car to electric. Um, you know, let me make the mistakes so you don't have to. Uh, I'll be doing lots of research. There's tons more to do. But at the moment, I do know now what BMS means, LDU, DCDC, ACDC, etc. is. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's plenty more to get to grips with. So uh, any help, um, I will gladly appreciate it. And um, God knows how many parts this series will be. Initially, I think I'm going to try and do it in under 100. <laughs> uh, could be here in five years time at number 360 but who knows yeah there's no rush to do it i love doing it i love learning something new and i love meeting new people um so yeah so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to go around the whole car and sort of show you as well as me because it's not going to look like this for long when i start taking things apart um i'm going to completely sort of strip it out underneath i'm going to clean it all up make it look lovely because i like doing that so um so let the strip down commence okay so here she is project number five so this is a, a new dimension uh, gt3 rs replica body kit fitted to a 987 boxster uh if you look at loads of my other videos you actually see how these kits fit together um it's basically built around the original boxster doors and everything else is fiberglass um, this car has already had all the bodywork prepped. I've done a few more bits and pieces to it probably about six months ago. But yeah, the idea is, is I'm going to make this fully electric. So there's going to be a lot to do. A lot of it will be underneath. Um, you know, um, inside I need to do a lot of building as well. Um, but that can be done at a later date the goal for me is is because i've driven it in here as a petrol car i want to be driving it out as an electric car so i want it to be able to move um, i will probably take the rear bumper off because that will uh, give me more access i've got a nice big ramp here um, i've put new wheels on it anyway um, so it looks quite nice but yeah they're gonna have to come off and stay off i'm gonna take the side skirts off because i think they're just gonna get in the way um, up front this front whole section is not secured it's just put in place with zip ties again i might just take that off and store it underneath um, i've put all of this trim back but this is all standard box stuff in terms of what we're planning to do is first of all i've got to strip out the engine and the gearbox uh, and ultimately the way this is going to work is we're going to have um, the original engine bay will contain tesla batteries so here you go here's my uh, big stack of tesla batteries i've got 14 there um, i think we're going to have two in the boot but they're going to be underneath the boot floor in a box um, so you still got the original boot uh, we're going to have three in the front so uh, that will probably <clears throat> they will probably fit there stacked up three in there um, which would be nice and then the rest are going to go in two boxes that will go in the original engine bay uh, i'm going to use a special mounting frame that um I will get from a company called Drift Moto. Hello, Neville. All right, mate. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how that will work. Um, there's my dog. Hello, Luna. And here we have the Tesla large drive unit that again I got from Drift Moto. So that will mount on the subframe and that will be lifted up into there. 
So one of the first jobs I'm going to do is start taking the gearbox and engine out, uh, get into grips with all of this here. Um, excuse the exhaust silence, so that's just a very old broken one that I put on to get it uh, driving. Um, it is, uh, it's seen better days. Looks like a snake <laughs> with his mouth open. But yeah, all of that's going to go in the bin. Uh, I'm going to get all of that out. Um, drop the engine out and the gearbox and uh, and yeah we're just going to sort of take it from there really we're going to give it a nice clean up all make it look nice but yeah that's uh, that's the plan I've got a week off work this week so I might start cracking on with it and uh, just start stripping it down so uh, wish me luck anyway lovely to meet you uh, and um, I will see you on part two take care everyone bye bye <laughs>